Thanks for pressing play, guys. We are Excalibur Comics Cards and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, ExcaliburCCG.com. I'm Chris, and this guy they affectionately refer to as the Awesome Randy is joining me today. We are talking great comics for December 11, 2013. You've only got a few more weeks of the year left. Yeah, you all do. You me all too. do. You all do. do. You do just too. you guys. Not a. <laughs> we're going to extend the year with our powers. No, just Something. kidding. Guys, uh, it's been a great year so far. It's flown by, and we're going to talk some great comics. There's been tons of great comics this year. I, I, you know, I was thinking of maybe us doing some kind of year in review type video or something, but there's, we've covered so much stuff just since we started doing the show. I, I don't even know if I, where I'll even start, to be honest with you. There's been a lot of great stuff, and guys, there's a lot of great stuff coming out this week. We're about to dive right into that. Two quick shout out to Brad Campbell. Thank you for the awesome work, sir. It is greatly appreciated. And guys, as we've been mentioning before, it's the holiday season. It's time to get gifts. If you don't have an idea of what to get, your friends, loved ones, whatever, get them a gift certificate to our store. We have gift certificates available here in Shreveport and our Texarkana location. So get, get the gift that allows them to get what they want or apply <laughs> towards what they want. Gift certificates are available of any denomination, you can use them anytime and apply them towards anything that we sell at either location. Yay, team gift certificates. Yay, so, team Excalibur. Yay, team Excalibur as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And guys, we're going to dive right in to the comics this week because we got a lot to cover. A whole lot. A whole lot to cover. So we're going to dive right on in. And Randy, what do you want to start off with? Uh, we have a new event going on within... Marvel, right, and this new event is the Inhumanity uh, storyline that's now kind of taking over right on the hills of Infinity Ending. Right. And for those of you, a little bit of a spoiler here, who don't know what's going on, we had Black Bolt facing off against Thanos, and he uh, used his voice to trigger a bomb that made the Terrigen Mists across uh, I guess explode across the world and so all these hidden inhumans who thought that they were just human are suddenly transforming uh, gaining powers some are going to be heroes that we've already known some are going to be villains some are going to be all new uh, lots of all new people so uh, this is going to be a big event that will be uh, covering Marvel, uh, the whole Marvel Universe for quite some time right yeah, now, yeah. The, the first, uh, let's say the first quarter of uh, the new year. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it begins here. We we had last week the Inhumanity book come out, and we also have a book that we'll talk about, uh, Inhumanity Awakenings with our number ones, Right. but these are kind of the tie-ins that we're going to see that are uh, going to be... Um, have the, their point INH for the inhumanity or inhumans. The the most obvious of these that will um, from the from the descriptions it's going to be one is uh, Uncanny X Men number thirteen INH point INH. This is the girls' night out. Uh, for some reason, for those of you who don't know what's uh, been going on after the Battle of the Atom, we have. Kitty Pride, who's suddenly there with uh, the Uncanny X-Men now, not the uh, Wolverine in the X-Men or the all-new right. X-Men. She's now with the Uncanny X-Men, so she's joining this girls' night out, and suddenly they're having to deal with these people who are popping up with superpowers there. So they're oh, yeah. dealing with the effects of uh, this Terrigen Mist explosion okay. that's gone on. Uh, to a lesser extent, we're going to have two titles that are coming out this week that have the INH behind it, but through the throughout their description doesn't necessarily explain why. Uh, one of these is Mighty Avengers number four point INH, and with this we finally get to see the Mighty Avengers team together for the first time. Yay! Okay. Uh, we also get to see the emergence of a new Ronin. Uh, there, oh, yes. so that's that's going to be the first time. Man, this is this is most likely going to be uh, Spider Hero as he, as he's been referred to so far. Now taking on an official costume there, not just wearing the um, Spider Man Halloween outfit. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. The knockoff outfit, and uh, <laughs> we're also going to see possibly the the emergence of the the new Thorn in the side for the Mighty Avengers, uh, something called Cortex. Okay, so. And and how it's related to to 
inhumanity. I don't know exactly, but it's got that that point INH on it. Finally, we have Avengers AI number seven point INH. This is one where they're the the Avengers AI group. I don't know what their their official term is, but they're trying to clean up after the events of uh, Infinity, and they're having to deal with. Grandma, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know exactly that, exactly what's going on there. That's awesome. Uh, one of the things that's going to probably appeal to a lot of people, we have Daredevil uh, guest starring in this issue, and it's going to be lots of shenanigans there with uh, Hank Pym and uh, Matt Murdock, and we get to see kind of uh, maybe a little little reluctant but hero moment there for Doombot. So, okay. We've, reluctant we've got, hero, yeah, yeah exactly. that's rel- <laughs> Reluctant little little thing. He's, he's finding his inner hero, sort of. Uh, he's the best part about Avengers. He, he is definitely, <laughs> definitely. So we've got those three. That's uh, in humanity starting up. Uh, those of you who are obsessed with having to pick up everything that ties into the storylines, those are going to be ones you'll want to add to your list. So tell me, what do you think of the sudden expansion of Inhumans throughout the Marvel universe? It's it's something different that they're working with there. Usually it's this group that, you know, they, they keep to themselves, and now it's kind of impossible to do that. I like yeah, that they've shaken yeah. up the group there. Uh, for those of you who read the ending of Infinity, mm-hmm. know that uh, there are certain characters that now are believed to be dead. They're, they're not, but so we're going to see how the Inhumans deal with being part of this new world with all these new Inhumans and not having, I'll go ahead and say it, not having their king there with them. Yeah, yeah. So, it'll be interesting. We've got tons coming out here with Forever Evil. Yes. I want you to uh, cover that for us. Boom, Forever Evil, guys. Not the main event, but tie-in issues for this week. Starting off with uh, Forever Evil Arkham War, number three of six. Remember, guys, this is a six-issue Miniseries, Peter Tomasi on board here, Scott Eaton on art. And with this issue, it's time for a new protector of Gotham to rise. And we are looking at a showdown between Bane and Killer Croc with this issue. Is it going to be one of those? It's supposed to be. Oh, that's interesting. It's supposed to be. <laughs> you know, until... Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. Until DC <laughs> changes everything up with, you know, right. whatever else is Everybody going on. Everybody comes back and, you know, and everything's yeah, fine again. You know. But I, th- that's a, that's, I think it's really just a, a cool twist. we already right. got these Gotham villains that are so associated with Gotham. And now the whole twist on everything that's happened because of Forever Evil, one of these has to become, or is, is poised to become, the protector of Gotham. Uh, very cool concept. Guys, yeah. also uh, Justice League number 25. Hits the shelf this week. Another Forever Evil tie-in issue. And this issue sees Owlman's plans for not only Nightwing, but Ultraman as well. And if you guys know anything about Owlman, he's kind of... I mean, he's like the opposite of Batman. He's kind of the brains behind a lot of things, too. So what his evil machinations are uh, for the both of them, hopefully will be revealed or at least properly teased. In this new issue, yeah, we we should mention that the, the uh, solicitations for this mention not Nightwing but Dick Grayson because sure there's been the the whole huge outing going on there with him so. right right so yeah so so let's see I mean we haven't even touched the surface of what's going to really change with Dick Grayson slash right. Nightwing yet ever since the events of the of the first issue for Every Evil so, right. So here we go, guys. Even more, uh, even more along those lines. And also, Justice League of America number ten, another Forever Evil tie-in issue. And and from and if you've been reading, guys, you've seen what has happened. The team has just been torn apart, torn asunder. And now in this issue, they're trying to reform, trying to get a second wind about them to come back and help join the fight against the crime syndicate that has taken over everything. And the person who's in charge of that is one of my all-time favorite DC characters. I love that they have taken Stargirl and just yeah. made her total badass. I, I love this character. I love what they're doing. That's cool because when she first is introduced in the series, it's just she's supposed to be the face of. She's yeah. supposed to be the, you know, whatever. She's the not going to get her hands dirty. Exactly. She's, she's just, yeah, the voice in the face. Yeah, but now things have taken a totally different, well, taken a very different turn for her, and we'll see what she can do is step up to the plate with what's going on 
with this. Yeah. I got one other uh, event storyline to talk about. Do you want to cover it? Do you want me to? Oh, no. You're you're leaving out. We also have uh, Constantine number nine is a forever evil time. That's right. I here. forgot. The Blight. Yeah, the Blight. And this this has, he's he's given himself over to a group here, and, and now suddenly he's having to travel through his heads, and we're going to get to see some of the uh, very shocking secrets here of uh, Constantine. What's, what's he hidden from other people, maybe hidden from himself. Oh God! So, how deep is that? Way? So yeah, we, we get that, <laughs> and and it should be mentioned. Uh, well, we have Suicide Squad number twenty six. That's also a Forever Evil tie in. All those okay. have been tying in. This is Matt Kent writing that. He's right. also writing the uh, Justice League of America right now, and this is going to be uh, be a cool one because this is all happening at Bell Reeve, and uh, this is going to be Amanda Waller versus King Shark and. Harley Quinn versus uh, James Gordon Jr. Oh, so God. we get some people facing off here. Not sure what's going to happen with that or exactly how this one is is a tie-in, but it, it deals with villains. Maybe that's that's what their their thing is. And we should also it's not a Forever Evil tie-in, but it should be mentioned. Nightwing number twenty five uh, twenty six okay. is the last of the story before it starts dealing with the ramifications of what's going on in Forever Evil. So, right now, if you've been reading Nightwing, we haven't had anything going on in there that's that's dealt with that. Now we're about to see okay. that after this issue. So, people be prepared. You're going to be one of picking up Nightwing to, to see what's going on there. I'll let you deal with the other event storylines since I touched on those. That's awesome. And quick aside, sure. Suicide Squad... Amanda Waller is tough as nails, but I feel sorry for the person that has to deal with James Gordon Jr. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. He's an awesome, awesome character. Well, yeah, yeah, to say the least. And guys, uh, I guess really the last of the storyline stuff to wrap up with, we got Batman number 26, Zero Year, is continuing with this issue. And uh, we find in the previous issue, especially in the previous issue, not so much in, in other ones, there seems to be this uh, hostility from... Bruce Wayne mm -hmm. towards Jim Gordon. Yeah. Uh, there was, especially in that last issue. But now in this issue, Batman, Bruce Wayne, and Jim Gordon are going to have to work together uh, to face the threat that they're, that they're dealing with now. So I, I don't, I, it really, I, unless I've missed it, I don't understand where the hostility is coming from. Unless, For me, I'd, but, have, I'd have to say it's probably the fact that this Jim Gordon that we're seeing is not some... He's a detective. He's he's, not, he's an actual detective, and, yeah. and the guy's smart, and he's he's figured everything out here pretty yeah, much. So and so for for he you know I think that's one of those things that maybe it pisses Bruce off a little bit <laughs> that he's not as slick as as he he thinks he is. So yeah. I like that they've stepped Gordon up to this new level there. Mm -hmm. That he's not just like some clueless guy that's like I don't know why this guy has you know where he gets all the money for his wonderful toys or this or that right. You know, you've got a reason there. Yeah, and keeping it, you know, keeping it realistic, realistic. You know, I mean, because if he if he did act upon the full idea of that, then he'd be shutting down Bruce Wayne, effectively shutting down Batman and stuff. Right. But he knows how to knows how to temper it. So guys, teaming up to face off against the Riddler, and we still got several more issues of the Zero Year storyline to, to go on. It's, it, in Batman, I'm not sure yet of any other tie-in issues coming out, but Zero Year is still still continuing. Yeah. Guys, that's the event storylines, right? Those are, those are the events. Yeah. yeah, let's. We have God, that was a ton. Yeah, well, we have tons of number one, so let's just we dive do. right into. Go that. ahead, start it off. Uh, I, since I talked about the uh, inhumanity, I'm going to go ahead and mention we have inhumanity, the awakening number one of two coming out here, and this ties in directly to uh, Infinity: The Hunt. It's written by Matt Kent, who also wrote uh, The Hunt, and this is going to take a look at the. Students from the different schools here. The the cover we we've had Rich Johnson uh, make an allusion to it or allude to it, and some other people that the A in Awakening has an Avengers A on it. So this may be something that maybe we're looking at uh, uh, one of the Avengers or young Avenger kids who is an Inhuman there. Okay. So I I don't know if it's that or if it's something else. Maybe it's just a red herring. But this is going to take a look at. These uh, school kids, yep. the younger kids, and to me, some great characters that really don't get enough, uh, you know, of the spotlight there. So it's it's going to be looking at them dealing with the effects of this Terrigen Mist Bomb again. It keeps yep. popping up everywhere right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's literally everywhere. So, I mean, like, the Inhumans take poised to be the new 
mutants. Yeah. It's like, you know, the powers and the, and the whole chaos yeah. uh, that would be associated with that, especially. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there is one in particular that I really want to talk about, but... Do it. I, uh, Dead Body Road, baby! <laughs> Number one of six from Image Comics from Justin Jordan and Matteo Scalera. Justin Jordan uh, is doing a bunch of writing for DC now. He's doing Green Lantern... New Guardian, uh, he's, he, he did some other stuff as well, uh, but he also did Lu The Legend of Luther Strode and The Strange Talent of Luther Strode from Image Comics, and this is his next uh, Image, Image Skybound imprint uh, series coming out this week. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, this is about, this is simply a story of revenge, is right. basically what it is. A, a guy with his crew go in to rob a bank. People die. People that should not have died, died. He spends his time in jail. He's back out. And now he's coming out for payback. Seems like, a, I, think, I think in some ways it seems like a familiar type of concept. But I want to see what Justin Jordan does with it. Well, let's make it a little more personal. Because it's not just people die. It's that his wife dies. Exactly. exactly. And, and so, yeah, you can see that this revenge here is going to be a little bit more. Think of... Think Mel Gibson's payback kind of thing with this, with a guy who just like has nothing to lose and he's going yes. to, you know, take everybody out. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, Mel Gibson's payback, which was based <laughs> off of uh, Richard Park uh, <laughs> or Richard Stark <laughs> nice. uh, story, there. <laughs> nice segue. We have Richard Stark's uh, Parker, the yeah. fourth book coming out called Slayground. Awesome. And uh, these have been Darwin Cook on both writing and art. One of the most phenomenal things to happen in comics over the last couple of years. Love these uh, books. This is a hardcover of it coming out here. This deals with Parker. He's just committed a bank job. Bank job. We just oh, talked about that. He's, uh, <laughs> he's in the getaway, and he crashes his car. He's able to get away with the loot, except there are these two police officers that have seen everything go down, and instead of calling it in, they decide... We're going to get in on this action out of our own. We can take him out and we can take the loot. And, you know, this is going to work. They get some business partners involved. And it's just a game of uh, cat and mouse. Okay. So, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Darwin Cook art on this. And, you know, Richard uh, Stark just has some amazing, uh, gritty, hard-boiled, crime stories that he right. tells there so this is one that you guys definitely need to get and it may be a, a stocking stuffer for somebody because you know everybody loves you know these stark stories yeah uh, parker stories here yeah that, that's a, that why don't you mention stocking stuff <laughs> uh guys another one that i thought was a, a pretty unique concept once i got to look it into it a little bit more but krampus number one Hits the shelf this week. I was just reading about this one. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's crazy and add to it. But but Krampus number one from Image Comics hits the shelf this week. Uh, this is okay. The the premise for this basically is that the Santa Claus or the Christmas figures of, of different cultures and stuff have lost their powers or lost their abilities, and they turn to basically like the demon version of <laughs> Santa Claus. Uh, Krampus, who is they look to him, they look to him to find out what happened to the powers, who took them, and if he can get them back. But he's like dealing with the devil basically in, in some right. ways. Well, they so anybody who's watched the league uh, knows who Krampus is. Yeah, the Krampus is out there. They they've talked about Krampus is not just like the devil version. Krampus is like the guy that gives out coal. He is oh, yeah. the mean. <laughs> Santa Claus. He is not nice in any sort of way. Right, right. The other thing that should be mentioned is there is a secret society of Santa Clauses. Yes, yes. And this poor guy is not invited. He's not part of it. So maybe there's a reason why he acts so much like a Grinch there at Christmas yeah. time. So, I, but I, I'm, I'm puzzled with. I'm interested, but puzzled. Yeah. Because uh, this is an ongoing series. No, this is, is only it? five issues. Oh. Uh, or, well, I don't know. Maybe I got the impression that it was. It was I, just, I was just like, I don't Who know knows? how we'll sustain that. But I right. mean, it gives you something to look forward to each year. <laughs> well, and, and until it could be like uh, Ghosted was one of those that never said it was a, a limited series, and uh, well, yeah. then all of a sudden they said now ongoing. So they, I guess, had it intended to be that. We'll see if this is the same. Yeah, different take on Christmas, Santa Claus, yes. all that. If you're into that, this this should be one that you check out. And it's creator owned, so give the guys a chance. Yeah, definitely. Uh, here's here's the big one that I'm surprised we didn't lead off with. Justice League 3000 is coming out here. 
And uh, this is going to be written yep. by um, fan favorites Keith Giffen and uh, what JMD Matisse mm-hmm. there. And we have art by Howard Porter. This is a book that got delayed a couple of months because originally it was supposed to be Kevin McGuire right. on board as the artist. I have to say, once I saw the preview pages of, of the different character designs, I really like Howard Porter's character designs. I, I think they even, even though I love Kevin McGuire, I think they are some better character designs. So we'll see what, what goes on there. This is these um, familiar faces. They, they seem to have the powers of the original Justice League members. Right. And they're showing up in the year 3000, which happens to be the, the Legion of Superheroes year. So we're not okay. sure what's going on with that, why they're in this time period. But this is going to be answering the question of what they're doing there, who brought them there, uh, you know, what's just, you know, the reasoning behind all of this. Why Why do we need to even read it? We're, we're going to find out why. Exactly. A lot of mystery, a lot of cool things going on there. Uh, welcome back to to you know big time JLA comics there, Howard Porter. <laughs> yeah, well, really, welcome it's, back to Howard Porter. He's been well. I mean, uh, he, he's done some things here and there yeah, for DC, yeah. but I mean, this is JLA. This is where he got his name known, and uh, with uh, Grant Morrison's run. Exactly. So exactly. He, he's back, and hopefully, uh, this is going to be huge for Image Comics yeah. or, or DC Comics. I'll be checking it out. Yeah. So, guys, another one. I think we're about maybe halfway through the new number ones because there's so many coming out this week. But another one is Smallville, Season 11, Alien, number one. This sees Clark Kent and Lex Luthor at odds with each other because a meteor has struck. And, of course, Lex Luthor wants to find out more about the, the meteor itself. And, of course, Clark Kent, Superman, is there to help and protect people. So we'll be seeing them face off somewhat. I'm not, I'm not calling this a big battle royale between the two, but... The mystery and intrigue between them concerning this meteor is what you'll be wanting to check out. So, fans of Smallville, this is going to be a four-issue miniseries that you can check out and get your fix of Tom Welling likeness Superman, if you like Tom Welling. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm just real quickly going to go over this. I'm going to try and speed things up since we have so many number ones. Indestructible number one comes out from IDW. This looks like a fun series. It's about a character, uh, Greg Pincus. And Greg Pincus is the latest new celebrity superhero, except for the fact that he has no superpowers. He has no uh, heroic ability (laughs) or no heroic bone in his body. It just happens to to be that a lot of people seem to think that he's indestructible for some reason. Yeah, exactly. uh, so he, he's he's got to take that on. We'll, we'll see. This is going to be a comedic take on the whole reluctant superhero story. Right, exactly. Uh, guys, also, uh, Marvel brought back with uh, Marvel Knights. That has brought back their Marvel Knights line. This week we have Marvel Knights Hulk number one hitting yeah. the shelves this week, which I'm on board for. I want to check it out. Joe Keating writing and Pieter Kowalski on art. And this sees Bruce Banner and the Hulk in Paris tracking down... Uh, someone there in Paris, and it looks like this other person is able to become a Hulk or a version of Hulk themselves. But he has no idea what he's doing there. He doesn't really know why, who he is, any of that. He's, yeah, Bruce Banner's lost his yeah. memory. Something has happened there to cause that, so he's, he, here he is in a, new, a different different place. Right. No memory, tracking, trying, and then ultimately trying to track down and find out who this other person is and what, what they're able to do. The Marvel Knights imprint was originally an indie imprint where yeah. they're bringing in indie creators it kind of got away from that that's where they're going uh, going again with exactly. all this so keating and uh kowalski are are taking this indie kind of an approach to the hulk story yes, yes. and i want to see it i'm on board big one for me sherlock holmes moriarty lives that's uh number one of five there it's written by david list he did uh mystery men for um marvel comics which was an amazing uh Pulp kind of golden era, age era story here. Okay. This is a story we all know. Moriarty, Sherlock Holmes, they're fighting. They fall off. Reichenbach uh, falls there, po- supposedly to their deaths. Uh, we've seen stories afterwards that Holmes somehow survives and he's back doing his thing. We've never had the story told from the uh, the other point of view. Right. We get that now. We see that Moriarty survives too, except he winds up in some little town in Switzerland. He doesn't have his connections. He doesn't have his his money. He doesn't have anything here. It's just him alone, and he's facing off against somebody that might be more of his match 
than Holmes was. What? So, different take on uh, the whole Moriarty story that we haven't seen before. I'm super, super excited for this. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, uh, you know what? That's the new number ones for me. Did you oh, have we've got ones? we've got uh, Doc Savage coming number one coming That's out right. here. And uh, this one is written by Chris Robertson. He uh, did I Zombie. That's now a, a, a soon to be TV series. He, he did tons of tons and tons of tons of books for yeah. uh, for people, and he's now doing uh, tons of books over there at uh, Dynamite Comics. Yeah. He, he's t- bringing back pulp legend Doc Savage. And Doc Savage is kind of like the peak of mental and physical abilities and it's he, him and his weird wild crew that they solve mysteries and crimes using science and you know physical means right, right. there to, to do so so should be a fun one uh, we also have Brain Boy number zero coming right. out this is a mini series from Dark Horse Comics those have been super hot right now this is uh, just re collecting everything that was in Dark Horse Presents uh, and then they're going to lead right into the uh, number one with the miniseries going on. This is about uh, Matt Price, whose name is uh, nickname is Brain Boy. He's the world's uh, strongest telepath. He protects the president, does all these different things. But this is taking a look at his uh, first adventure and just how he gets way in over his head. This is uh, written by Fred Van Lint. And we get, this may be the first time that I've seen Freddie Williams the second art outside of uh, DC Comics, because he's oh, been okay. a DC boy for so long there. Okay. Uh, give me just a minute here to look and see. Stark, small. Oh! Oh, oh yeah! Yeah! How could I forget? Guys, we have WWE number one coming out here. This is a... Uh, Written by uh, Mick Foley, the WWE legend there. Okay. And this is going to be a tale that kind of takes a look at it, uses the current WWE roster, and uh, creates a story for comics. Uh, We have John Cena and Mark Henry battling for the gold. Who's going to get the gold? I always, I always wanted to do that, do that with the strip there. <laughs> uh, but it's also going to feature uh, people like CM Punk, Fandango, Fandango, Seamus, <laughs> and others uh, within the story there. That's so cool. <laughs> there, it's it's Vicky Guerrero and uh, Booker T trying to contain all the chaos that's going on. So, so should be a fun story, uh, fun read. And anybody who's a fan of the WWE or wrestling, pick yeah. up the book. Yeah. Uh, two other things real quick. Uh, I'm just going to lump in with the number ones. Uh, yeah. Something I forgot to mention last week and that's something new for this week. Uh, we have the yeah. first trade uh, collection for Sheltered from Image Comics. Yes. Awesome hitting series. this week. Uh, how, is it the first four issues? First four or five. Four or five. Four or five issues. Yeah. Guys, this should. Be, uh, these are usually inexpensive. These first collections are inexpensive. Yeah, usually like, like ten, bucks. ten bucks. And you get a, a lot of value for that. It's a series that Randy and I have really liked and you should check it out. Especially in this collect edition, get more bang for your buck and more story in one setting. Also, last week I forgot to mention, but another one of our favorites with the first four or five issues collected is Ghosted. Five issues of Ghosted. I know five that. issues of Ghosted, Volume One, trade paperback hitting the shelves. That oh, if you get the trade, I am so jealous because you just get it all in one lump sum and didn't have to wait every month like yeah. we did. <laughs> but it was great collection there for the first for the first uh, uh, set of. Uh, Storyline, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then, uh, fantastic art, great writing, great story. Check it out. Now we're going to move on to some of our favorites. Some of our favorites. And I'm uh, going to lead off with my favorite, Lazarus, number five, ah! coming out here. Uh, Greg Rucka. What Greg can Rucka. I say? This guy has written an incredible story. The first trade uh, featuring the first four issues of this is out right now. Okay. People can pick that up. And this is the beginning of a new storyline here in which we're taking a look at Forever as she starts to question what's going on within her family right. and uh, just what is her role within the family. Who is she when it comes to, to the family? Uh, and all this is, is on the heels of her brother's betrayal within the family. I just described this to people. This is kind of like a dystopian uh, Dallas <laughs> it's, it's kind of what this is. So if you like kind of like the dra- family drama of Dallas, you get that kind of here with some amazing characters. Uh, it's a yeah, fun, and, fun, and fun. I'm looking forward to this because in the, in the previous issues we've seen a lot with the Carlisle family. Yeah. The family, the royalty. Oh, yeah, we get to see the... The waste. Yeah, the waste now in this. The, yes. This is the, 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 the family's the... 
top of the line, the few people that have the money, have the possessions, everything. The waste are like the, the tens of thousands of people who work the land, who who live, you know, in poverty and everything else. Yeah. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see just who those are, especially because you've seen forever react, or, or not react, interact mm -hmm. with those people before. And, you know, she she didn't like what she had to do. Right with it, so exactly. it, it'll be interesting to but see. But she did it. it. She, she did. Did what she had to do. Yeah. Uh, another one for me, guys. Uh, number two of Manifest Destiny hitting yes. the shelves. I really enjoyed the first issue. I loved the whole concept on Lewis and Clark's exped expedition uh, to the South, and the reason why <laughs> France sold off Louisiana so cheaply to everybody. <laughs> but guys, this is a different take, a, a historical fiction take on. Lewis and Clark's expedition, and as they're exploring, they find out that this land that they're exploring is populated with things they have never seen before, and that continues here in issue number two. I like the way the first issue ended. You got this. You got these smart guys with the, the group, the caravan, but you've also got criminals that are with them as well, causing some trouble, causing some tension along the way as well. I liked it on board. You should if you if you haven't got Manifest Destiny number one, check it out. Number two hits this week. Yeah. Uh, here's another one that's probably not one a lot of people are reading, and the first two issues should be available for them to pick up. Coffin Hill number three comes out, okay. and this series, I'm totally blown away by this. This is what I was expecting when I was expecting these new series coming out from Vertigo Comics. We have uh, our, our main character, uh, Eve. She, rich kid who, who partied, you know, dealt, you know, dabbled in, in witchcraft and all this other stuff. She's now a grown adult. We we can't really say more uh, responsible per se, but she she and one of her friends, Nate, are having to deal with these children disappearing in the wood these woods, and the woods just happen to be a place where years before, as teenagers, they created some ritual and woke up the next day covered in blood and friends missing. So uh, they, they're having to go back into these woods and the woods seem to want her to come back to them. Okay. So it's it's real supernatural, uh, a lot of a lot of witchcraft and craziness in it. Love this series. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Give me something else. You guys, uh, for me, three, number three. Yes. It's the shelves this week. The three is a story of three helot slaves yeah. uh, in Sparta uh, on the run for their lives. One of them got drunk and a little lippy, and it cost the lives of so many other ones that were in his community. And now he and two others are on the run for their lives from Trembler. And, and you might go, well, you know, slaves on the run from Spartans. It should be mentioned that within this, the slaves aren't necessarily slave slaves they are people of sparta also that just you know they were trained the same way as the spartans but the spartans were like the 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 chosen few that would go on and the the rest are, are just kind of like you know fodder to, to fight in the uh, battles for them to work on the uh, in the fields the but and you know there's this whole craziness to the history of the the helots the helots helots however you say it in which you know Spartans couldn't own land, Spartans couldn't own money, own money, but they could. Yeah, there, uh. there's there's everything else, and we're getting to see another part of the the whole uh, culture of Sparta with the Trembler. Yes, and uh, the, the, you'll see just what this is that goes on with the Trembler, who a Trembler is, and why. They might be a little pissed at these uh, three slaves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. with, the, with the first, with the first issues of this, man, you get uh, Kieran Gillen is writing this. One of our, one of our writers that we really like, but man, he's put so much time into this, and what you're getting with this is just a lot of depth. Yeah. A lot of depth and a lot of look into society, uh, that society at this time, and it's just it's deep. So, yeah. guys, this is one you should be checking out from Image Comics. Also from Kieran Gillen, we have, uh, and from Avatar uh, Press, we have Uber Number 8 coming out. And this has been awesome because this has been taking a look at the Pacific Theater and how they're dealing with the super yeah. soldiers yeah. there. And uh, how, you know, the Americans are kind of figuring some stuff out and adjusting their strategies with these super soldiers. But it just, it seems to be that right now the... Uh, 
the the Japanese have the upper hand. The the one good thing about this is we found, or, or that ties us in with the uh, German side of things, is that we found this character who happens to be the brother of the Colossus, the the one you know U.S. Uh, yeah. super soldier that we've had. So right. he, he might be the answer to everything here. Right, exactly. So it's tying in, but this is an intense series, and it's very heavily based on history. Yes. With just kind of a few tweaks here and there to add the super heroes to it. Oh, I'm so digging it, man. Oh, I really it. am. It, I don't know, man. I mean, Keanu Gillen is doing some other stuff. He's doing Iron Man. He's doing Young Avengers books yeah. that... We love Young Avengers. Uh, Iron Man's been really good, but it's like he's just doing that so he can like make this stuff happen. Three uh, Uber, yeah. I mean, and, and right now he he said this is going to be the last time uh, for a while that he does anything that he has to do this much historical research <laughs> for because two books is almost too much to handle. Yeah, because he's doing a lot. It, it, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. 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 Another one uh, for me. Uh, I, I've been hanging with it and. Uh, and I, and I really, really enjoy it. But this issue, we get Wolverine number twelve, and this is going. This is soon wrapping up the current Wolverine series before we right. have a relaunch coming up in February. But in this one, this is the penultimate chapter of the Killable storyline. We're going to finally find out who's who's behind what's been going on with what he and Kitty Pride have been facing. Yeah, searching for the sword. What mystique is going on? Is Sabretooth involved? Who is the one that's behind the curtain pulling the strings? What's going on with Wolverine? And whenever this series ends, we're going to see a uh, different status quo for Wolverine yeah, with totally. a new series that's going to be coming out. So I'm excited to see how this wraps up, what Paul Cornell is going to do uh, with the writing, with the story. Uh, and and every month is a visual feast because Alan Davis is still on art and he's beautiful. He's a beautiful man. I, just love, I love <laughs> he's Alan a beautiful Davis. Man. But guys, uh, I'm he's on board. He's an Adonis. He's, yes, he is. He's unique. I love him, love him, love him. We have uh, from Boom Studios, sorry, my eyes are, are bothering me here. We have from Boom Studios, uh, Day Men 2, finally coming out. The first issue sold out. It, it had all this buzz. It's been, it had its property sold for a television series or a movie or something. We finally have issue 2 coming out here, and we see this, this sudden war that's broken out between these vampire families. And uh, David Reed is the one that, while his masters are asleep, he's having to deal with things. He's the Day Men for this family. And uh, the only thing is, he's having to survive right now because the daemon for the Ramses family is this guy whose uh, name is Jacob the Burner, and he set his sights on uh, David. So David's brand new, kind of to to his whole role with everything here, and uh, it's been intense. Brian Stelfreeze's art, awesome art, and uh, hopefully it's back on track on a mi- monthly status. Hopefully, hopefully, at least, or at least bi-monthly at the at the least. Something, yeah, not four or five months. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> guys. Walking Dead one eighteen hits yes. the shelves this week. We are still in all out war, and with the last issue, we saw Negan shoulder deep in 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 biters and whatever you want to call yeah. them, the zombies uh, on the show. They call them biters and all this uh, walkers and all that. But he's like he's basically he's trail still. He's still trying to dig himself out of this Walker pit yeah. that Rick left him in with the uh, with the preceding issue, uh, and also with this one, we're seeing Maggie t- come um, come center stage and how she's going to uh, tie into what's going on with Rick's plan that he has. And yeah. so far, I don't know. So far, kind of so far, so good for Rick. Uh, it we haven't there hasn't been uh, anything big, but he, he's definitely been able to take the fight to Negan. And, and put it at a standstill so far. So Negan, Negan is a with the last issue he showed a bit more of just how much of a unique character that he yeah. is. Uh, so I, I, I'm on board. I want to find out the, what the, else is going on. The big moment that I love so far from this um, whole war is that Negan makes one of the biggest mistakes here that he thinks that he has Rick's girl. Yeah, and exactly. he totally does not no, have Rick's no. girl. That's that's. I love that. He's just he's so sure of himself. He's so it. sure with his whole tirade of yeah. how to get to a man's heart. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's a totally different take on how to get to a man's heart. And that's really one of the first big mistakes we've seen from Negan with that because he he thought he had a bargaining chip with everything, exactly. and, and yeah, he really has nothing there. But at the end, he had Negan had such a point. 
with what he did and why he did it. Mm -hmm. So I, the way Kirkman is developing Negan, he's like someone that you hate, but then he has someone like these redeeming qualities. It's just like, yeah. ah. <laughs> so yes, but it, it makes it all the more interesting. You should be reading this, guys. All Out War. It's it's we're in it. Looks like it. It looks like it. That's it. That's it. Okay, guys. Well, the last one for me, Wolverine the X Men thirty nine. With this issue, we're still dealing with the uh, some of the effects of Battle of the Atom. And I want to I want to see this because it looks like it looks like we got Wolverine versus Cyclops versus Sentinels yes. and Shield is involved. And we saw uh, whenever that bomb dropped during the Battle of the Atom storyline that there were still Sentinels out there. Right. And apparently they were controlled by Shield or right. Shield has some association with them. That did not sit well with too many there in the mutant community, <laughs> and that was revealed by the brotherhood of the brotherhood that came, and and yeah. they revealed that when whenever they were trying the to from the future the team from the future. So I want to see, I want to know how they're going to how Wolverine and Cyclops who are now constantly at odds with each other, how they're going to deal with this mutual threat and mutual problem. So yeah. That's it for me, guys. And I love, uh, we got a new Wolverine and the X-Men series coming out next year. And I love what they're doing with this because, uh, like Young Avengers and several other Marvel Now series or whatever, are uh, Avengers Arena, they're, they're stopping their season. You know, right. Season one's done, and they're going to be launching into season two. Well, with Wolverine and the X-Men, first semester's done. Right. <laughs> and with the new... Wolverine the X-Men is coming out is like summer semester. Summer, well, summer school, yeah. Summer school, yes. The next semester. And uh, we got a lot, there's a lot of changes coming on board, guys. But, guys, there was a ton, it's a ton of stuff. I know this is going to be a long video, but there was so much stuff yeah. to talk about. There, there's huge, huge, huge week here. Yes, yes. So, fo so, guys, this would be the week to get everything that you want, have it ready for Christmas. Guys, remember, get the gift certificates are available. We're wrapping this up. We are done. We have spoken and said so much, and I'm just kind of rambling here. But talk to us, like us, yes. share us, yes. Facebook, you know, everything else here. You know, <laughs> you know the deal these days. Thanks for the new subscribers. Thanks for our current subscribers. Leave us a comment below, guys. Uh, Excalibur Comics, Cards and Games, and Shreveport and Tex Arcana, and our site ExcaliburCCG.com. Don't forget the gift certificates. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay warm. See ya.